Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today, Wednesday already. Wow, I can't believe that. Third day of uh, class, off and rolling, rock and rolling, and um, today's the 21st, October 21st, and getting close to the end of the month already. Um, James gave me a thumbs up, uh, Meek gave me a thumbs up, and I think that was through a response, but if somebody or James or somebody give me a thumbs up and you can hear me. Am I coming through all right? Not. Yes. Okay. Start to oh, me. Jesse, thank you. Kevin, all right. James Meek, all right. Um, James Meek, what about uh, project number? I forgot what uh, we were told yesterday. So um, great question, James. Um, talking about the, um, the oh. I misread it, didn't I, James? I'm sorry. I misread your question, the very first question. I thought it was project number. Sorry. All right. Uh, let's backtrack here. So project name. So James Meek's question was, um, how are we supposed to write the project name again? All right. So project name will be whatever you're working on. If you put something a little bit different or off, I'm not going to mark off on it as long as there's something there. Um, the response I gave back to James was the project number, not name. Sorry about that, James. Um, now you say on your last one, uh, what project number? I forgot what we were told yesterday. So the project number, um, so James, did I answer that? Uh, okay. You said, you said I did answer the part on the number. And did I answer the part on the project name? Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, so with that said, uh, just as a review on that, uh, uh, project number format is PK, which stands for packet, and then whatever week we're in, so we're in week one, so will be PK1. Uh, LAB will be next for the lab. Um, so if you're working on a lab one assignment, it'll be lab one. And the, the first assignment, um, like the um, syllabus was the first assignment. So um, that would have been um, ASSIGN1, but there's no title block on the syllabus. So you won't have to worry about that. Just submit the signed um, portion of the syllabus and you'll be good to go. All right, and then the project name is whatever, um, what, you can either get it off of what I put on the summit page, um, you know, like master title block. So there is your um, project name for that. Um, if, if it's not clear on there what it is and you, you either want to email me or you just want to uh, guess at what it would be, um, that's fine. Um, I'm not hard nosed about getting the exact um, name in there. But what I really am uh, firm on is getting something in there, all right? And and sure the project number is formatted correctly. Right. Um, everything else filled out. So Iman, uh, PK1, lab two, assignment one for assignment number one, yesterday's lab. Um, hold on, have the RI will come to you in a second. Let me pull that up because I don't want to lie again. Like I, I don't mean to lie, and I just I say something that I think I know, and it doesn't. <laughs> it's right. well, hold on one second, Iman. Let me answer your question. So, um, assignment number one for yesterday. So yesterday was we were in lab two yesterday. So if you're referring to the master title block, the packet number um, for the master title block. Project number will be PK1 LAB2 ASSIGN3. Iman, does that answer your question for that particular one? All you have to do is look at the assignment number, uh, the uh, assignment page, and that will give you all the information. The packet is at the top, the lab is right above whatever assignment you're working on, and then the assignment number is right next to the assignment. So, Iman, did I, did I answer your question before I move on to Javier? Maybe. 
Yeah, I'll let you respond to that as I move on to the next question. I'll come back if you need more help on that. Riar says, uh, could you uh, make a Oh, uh, could you make a poll moderator or enable closed caption? I don't have the ability to do closed caption. Um, I believe we have somebody from CART here, um, Nicole. Um, and I don't think we have a way, uh, Nicole, maybe you know this, or um, I'm not sure. But I don't think there's a way to show closed caption. Um, I do send the recordings off to um, uh, it's coming to me. It's coming to me. Um, anyway, it's uh, our connect, our connect, which is online. Um, I have a gentleman there, Austin Haynes. Um, he does a conversion on it, puts the uh, closed caption on it, and then um, he sends it back to me, and I post it. So let me share where the, all that's at. Uh, the question. You need closed caption if you can't understand me because I'm talking way too fast or slurring my words or whatever. Um, let me show you where that's at. All right, let me stop sharing here and share application. And it should come up. There it goes. Okay. So um, here I am in lessons, the, uh, the lesson tab. And if you scroll down, uh, my intention is after every or, um, posting, after every packet, a file that has all the uh, links in it that we talked about. And I have also the links in here. All of these are closed captioned. They're YouTube, and uh, YouTube has automatic closed caption on on there. Um, and then I've reposted, I think most of them, I th hopefully I got them all, but right here are the lectures. Um, so I started posting the lectures and this is from day, um, day one uh, lecture, part one and part two, because we had, you know, we took a break. And the same thing um, as yesterday, part one and part two, and those are all closed captions. That's what I send over, off to Connect, um, Austin Haynes, and then he sends back um, a um, closed caption recording on that. So hopefully that uh, that answers that portion of it, Javier. Um, and I'm sure uh, let me go back to here and I'm sure Nicole, um, unless unless I'm way off, Nicole, I don't think there's a way to um, have closed, closed caption on the screen. So um, let me know that if you if you have any different information. All right, let me go back to our chat here. Um, have you hopefully answered that? And Mon, you haven't got back to me. Hopefully I answered your question about the packet um, or the assignment number one yesterday. All right, let me pull that back up. Our, where we're going today. Um, while I'm doing that, any questions from Monday or Tuesday? I'm sorry, my phone is going off here. It's been one heck of a morning. It's um, all kinds of stuff going on. So I've been challenged already. And uh, let me turn the phone on silent and share this. Anyway, it's been exciting already this morning. And um, uh, mind puts assignment number three. Um, Okay, Iman, I don't know which one you're talking about. So uh, one from yesterday um, was lab two. Iman, go ahead, if you, uh, you wanna speak, go ahead. No, we're not hearing you if you are speaking. So, but the assignment from yesterday, um, yesterday was lab two. So right here, we have PK, oops, I'm not, I'm not sharing the scratch screen, but if you look at the assignment page, we have PK1, which is packet one, we're in week one. Yesterday, we were in lab two, 
it will be LAB2. And the only assignment yesterday was the master title block, ASSIGN3. Thank you, James, again. I appreciate that. Put that in there nicely. All right. All right. You mind you that you're good. Okay, cool. Um, and then before I get started, I want to uh, throw an apology out. Um, and I think this is mainly for James Meek, I think. Um, James Meek, were you the one that was having the problem with the line colors in AutoCAD yesterday? Was that you? Uh, yeah, it it was uh, me and it was just not, it, was, it wasn't really the colors, it just happened to be a gray line. The problem was that I couldn't edit anything I put in there. Oh. So did, uh, um, did you figure that out? Because I think I got another email about another complete different subject. Did you figure that yeah, out? Yes, so I, I did figure it out. And uh, yeah, I sent you like three emails yesterday. Uh, uh, one was the homework. One was, I mean, one was just the assignment to send you an email. The other was that one, and the other one was the line okay. uh, thing. But yes, pretty much. If you delete, at least on my outcut, if you delete the tab two after you made the eight by Eight and a half by eleven. It wouldn't allow me to, and then create a new one. It wouldn't allow me to edit anything in that layout. And, and I think I responded back to that email. That's something totally new on me. I, I had never seen that before. So, um, so thanks for thanks for filling me in on that. And I'm glad you got it figured out. But here's where I was going with the original statement uh, and an apology. And um, and to thanks to you and to anybody else that I might have been a little bit uh, abrupt either in chat on a response email. Um, there's no excuse for it. And if I sounded a little, I, I hope it wasn't sarcastic but or short tempered. I didn't mean to. It, it was just, like I said, there's no reason for it. And I apologize if I did um, in any way. So, um, Everybody who may receive an email that might have rubbed in the wrong way or in the chat box, if I put something that might have rubbed you the wrong way, that's not my intention. I'm always here to work with you. But sometimes, um, like I said, I'm not going to give any excuse. It's just, it shouldn't happen. And so if I did, I apologize. That's, that's where this whole conversation was going. Jane, yeah, I, I, yeah, I completely that. understand. You said, uh, you, you said if I'd had AutoCAD before, it took me a little bit by surprise, but I didn't take offense to it. Okay, and I, I think that's where part of this uh, apology, um, James, is, is directed towards or maybe enlarged, because I don't know if anybody else ran into that with any email replies. But I was I was like, well, everybody in AutoCAD that has AutoCAD knows how to change colors. And so I wasn't thinking it through that, you know, I knew, see, so here's what happened, James. Some people, this goes out to everybody, um, in the past, some people have gotten past 1409 and 1305 and just dove into some of these other advanced classes. And so that I guess that's why the question came out, because I, I knew you had experience, but I was thinking about somebody getting through, and then I'm like, oh, you know, that wasn't the case. That shouldn't be the case, because I know a little bit of your background that you shared with uh, yesterday or, or Monday. Um, so it, there's no reason for it, but um, there again, uh, uh, I'm glad it didn't take you the wrong way. Um, it took you back a little bit. That's that's what I had a feeling might have happened. So I, I, I do apologize to you and anybody else that I may have um, been well, a little short. It, it takes two to tango. So if you if you misunderstood something, that means I didn't make something clear enough. Well, I think it was more. I think I, I think, and it's really hard to be clear when you're typing either email or a chat box. I mean, chat box even worse. Uh, with AutoCAD, trying to get details, and um, I just think that it's difficult anyway. And then trying to deal with, you know, thinking how's this person thinking? What are they looking at? Number one, 
um, that whole realm is, is very difficult. And I'm not making any excuses either for me or for anybody else or anything. It's just it's just a difficult situation. And I've been doing this long enough that I, I should I should know everybody's on track now. Um, by meaning they've taken 1409, 1305, 1409, and everybody's on track. Because before um, I came in, I made this two years ago, I think, two, two and a half years ago, I made it a requirement for 1305 and 1409. Prior to that, people were just jumping into the program and into an advanced class going, how do you turn on a computer? You know, and or how do you, uh, what is CAD? <laughs> it's just like, you're like, oh my gosh. So an advanced class, I'd have to backtrack and then uh, take everybody else's time for that. So um, thanks for your patience, James, um, and anybody else too um, as well. No problem. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, James again says, forgot the two on the first one. Oh yeah, on lab two. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so if uh, Iman puts that mistake in there, then I'll mark off on James' paper. Just kidding. Not really. <laughs> yeah, we already have the emoji of laughing, and now, ha ha. Yeah, that is a joke. <laughs> Iman's happy about that one. <laughs> I'm not sure if she's uh, happy about the marks going off or the information that you gave, James. So, all right. Well, hopefully everybody's doing good today. Um, we're moving forward, um, and I think we're we're really getting a grasp on it. Um, a couple of things that did come across uh, back to James. Uh, I think it might have been both James. No, James again was uh, title block questions, and James, yours looked great. Um, James again. Um, wasn't your, you had the title block question about editing that or how it looked? Is that you? You sent me the email on. Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, hold on one second, let me turn my, yeah, go ahead. Was that you? Yeah, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Yeah, I had a question about, um, I was editing the block that I created for ArchD. Uh, I recreated it and edited the block and I tried to add another um, project uh, description in there uh -huh. and for some reason it would show up in the block but it wouldn't show up actually on like visible and I did everything to try to get it to show up and it wouldn't show up so I just went ahead and edited it edited it differently to where because um, it had two packet names on there in two different spots so I just took one of the packet names away and made one of the visible ones unit. That's for some reason I couldn't get it to work. Okay. Um, yeah, and that is that block that block. I don't know if it's a block editor's for, fault or the block itself. Um, yeah. While I'm talking about this, I, I'm not sure. And that thing has just always been not fun at all. Um, let me see if I can. Uh, well, I, I what I did is I copied. I copied one of the descriptions and then I just pasted it right underneath it and I just called it units and um, I gave the request that it would ask for to say inner units on it and everything mm -hmm. the attribution and uh, it just it wouldn't show up even made sure it was on the correct title or on the correct layer excuse me right. and everything and it just wouldn't show up and then when I went to edit it it's there but whenever I'm done editing, it disappears. <laughs> okay. So well, I, just, and I, I, I just, think one of the questions I had for you, James, was um, one of the questions I had for you was uh, that you, if you were hitting apply um, in the block editor, and I'm yeah, I, I, yeah, you were. I I, I kind of assumed that, and that 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 may have been another little insulting comment I put out there, but um, no, that's okay. Uh, I appreciate that because I I wanted to make sure I was doing everything right, so I I clicked save. There was no apply, but there was the save button, so I was making sure I saved it, and I deleted it and tried to remake one. I'm making a new attribution and then click save, and it's it still wouldn't show up on the actual title block. So I what okay. I did is I just uh I resent you um 
a new one where I, I re-edited it. And okay. what I did is uh, where it says Master Title Block, uh, Master, Master Title Block right there. Yeah. I had that also up there in the project and names and address section. And what I did is I just took that out and made it just say PK1. And then um, my, my uh, revision and drawn by, and then I put the units up there also. Yeah, it, it turned out really good. I mean, um, so let me run through this real quick. If anybody else is having the same problem, um, I should make another sheet to show you what it's like. Okay. Um, a new one pops up here. Let me make a real a quick one, a new one here. Because this thing is just a mess, and um, you you have a new brand new uh, ArchD. The C sheet is not too bad. So when you you end up with something like this, and what happens is you go in, and, and James, I don't know if this is the issue we're having, but this could have contributed to the issue. But when you double click on it, you get the block editor. Everybody knows that. Um, let's go into something like uh, date, okay? So here in the value, can you guys see my cursor? That, that was another question. The cursor. Okay, thanks, Brittany. Um, chat box. Um, yeah, right here you can see it has the, the date in there um, or a date. So let's go ahead and change that 10 21 20. Um, okay, and, and you know that you can make all your changes, but make sure you hit apply. That was the one thing I asked James about, and then hit okay. Well, there's my date along with a bunch. Of, you can see the 10, what is it today? 10 21 in there. There's also that eight in there, even so we went right over the top of it. So this is one of the issues with this block. You have to go in here after you do all the editing, put everything in, select that that gray area and hit delete, and then probably do it again. And finally, you get that junk out. But look at the other blocks. So one of the things, that one of the first steps I always tell the students in the beginning class is go through each one of these. Hit delete and just work your way through each one and just clear it out. So let's see what happens when I do that because I can tell you and it may work or may not work. So I'll, let's just say I went through each one of these. I'll go ahead. And one more here. So I hit delete on all those. And then after I'm done, we have no more of the sounds of symbol. And now I hit apply before you go out of it. And then we'll go and, and hit OK. So that did clear it up that time. Of course, that worked very nice at that time. A lot of times, even after you do that, you still have junk in here that you have to select and delete. So that, that's one issue in this block. The other thing is everything from from here, this is in this is in the block editor. And everything up here is not in is not in the block editor. You have to use a, a text command or text single line text and put it in there. Um, and that's the other thing. One of the other things I saw on somebody's sheet, I can't remember who it was. Um, when you put sheet one of one, if you put that information in there, um, in the block editor, don't forget. Uh, let's see, sheet number right here. We put one. This is just a reminder because I know you guys know this, but I think I saw it on one or two um, people that sent in for review. Um, put one of one, hit apply, and you can see how big that is down there. So don't forget they have the text options where you can set that. And like 125, I think, is what we have been using in the past. Yeah, it's a little, let's see what 0.25 looks like. 0.25 is probably about right. And hit apply again and then OK, and you're all right on that. But everything from here down is through the block editor. Um, everything up, 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 even in this space here and up here, is you have to use the text command. So just a reminder on that. Um, your project addresses um, are part of the block. Um, you didn't use a text command. OK, uh, so on yours, I, I don't know, James. That, it's like hit and miss, I guess. You know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I know for sure up in the very top up there, 
uh, and they may have changed something up too. Up, up at the very top, when you put like your um, uh, contents or any notes up there, you have to use a text command. Go ahead, James. So uh, on the top area right there, that's actually where I have a second, um, what do you call it? I can't think of it. Window where you can look at and uh, look at model space. If you, oh, okay. if, you, if you go down to where those four sections are, yeah, you, you uh, got rid of that information from the project name and address. Yeah, and that's what that's what I was talking about. See how there's four of them right there. If you click on the block, so what I did is I went in the block editor and I copied one of those project addresses to try to pick, pick a project address for. Uh -huh. So that I could add units in, and it wouldn't show up. I mean, it add, it let me add it to the block, but it wouldn't actually show up on the block for some reason. Okay, okay. But yeah. I, I I just entered the value information right there. See, so you can just type in whatever you want, and it will pop up in that in that window. Right, right. Okay. So it, and it, and I tell you, this thing works sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't clean clearly and clean. So uh, thanks for that that heads up, James, on that. Uh, be careful about putting a, a viewport in there. Um, I mean, you can do it. A lot easier just use the text command and then size it for that um, instead of going back and forth between model space and that. All right. So cool. And then the other question is um, um, the other question was um, some of you are running into problems with the the size of the title block on the A and B sheet. And it's okay if it doesn't match exactly the numbers, uh, the dimensions that I have on the examples, it's all right. And I'm, I'm thinking now, um, after doing this a few years, I'm thinking there's there's some issues with, with the com every computer being a little different because my numbers worked out fine um, and I'm inside the, um, print line, that little gray dotted area is a print line. But maybe my processor or my uh, video card's different. I, I don't know. Um, but if you, bottom line is, if you're off a few hundreds making this thing, just keep everything inside and you'll be fine on that. All right. And so if you're off a few in, uh, hundreds, no, no problem on that at all. That's a lot on the A and the um, E sheet. All right, any questions um, either on this, on the master title block before we move into today's lecture? Any other questions? While I'm here with CAD open, anything that's been baffling you guys? All right. For this specific assignment, we need to put our name, the project number, we need to fill in all this information, correct? Correct, James, yes, everything, Always, always on title blogs when you're submitting anything, and that includes the master, um, everything filled out. Um, I, and I, I can't remember if it was James or who it was yesterday asked me, uh, what about units? Do we put, you know, uh, one to one because you're drawing one to one, or do you put NA? And I said, uh, NA is fine um, because you're not, it's not an actual drawing, but as long as you address it, um, it it's fine, no problem. Okay. I just notice something. All right, good questions. All right, anything else before we move on? Um, and and uh, James Meek had replied back to me when he has a lot of problems with line, uh, line colors and stuff. I wanna make sure you guys understand. Um, one of the things I've seen at entry, entry level, and I guess James Meek, that's, that's where my mind was going a, a second. Sometimes we'll, we'll have the, the correct layers, and even if you go into layer properties, um, everything will look fine. The way that a line type, line weight, or um, a line color can get overridden is right here in this properties box. You can override the, and you guys probably already know this, but just a reminder, you can override the line type, color, and, and uh, weight. Um, you can override the layer through this box. And sometimes I've seen students 
So like I'm on the zero layer, but my 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 line is is turning out a different color. If you don't have by layer chosen, I'm on the zero layer, and now I go and make a line, and it's this orange color, and or a line type, and they're overriding uh, the uh, layer properties on that. So that's just one place as a reminder to um, make sure you check. All right, I think I've addressed everything that came across. Um, I appreciate that, um, the questions and the direction. Hopefully that was helpful, for, a little bit helpful for everybody um, as a reminder. And we'll go ahead and stop sharing this and get back to our PowerPoint. All right, so I don't see any other questions coming across the chat box, and we'll continue on here. So nice PowerPoint, huh? Gosh darn. It looks fine on my screen, and then go to post it. I don't know what the heck happened here. Yeah, it's fine on my screen. See if I can do something a little bit different today. This will help. I don't know if this will work or not. I'll give it a try. My problem is I can't see the chat box, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, if I hear something come in, I'll get out of this. It seems it like um, it's showing up better, um, the full screen, because it was hiding site analysis, and that's what our subject is. Uh, for today, um, site analysis. So we need to analyze the site. So you guys are working on uh, your your front yard, or a friend's front yard, or somebody's front yard. You're working on. So we need to start um, analyzing this. But before we can analyze it, we we do need to um, get some information down before we can start analyzing. But that's the direction we're going to head. Is every site needs to be analyzed in some way. So the first thing you'll do is is do a sketch um, of the yard that you're that you're working on, and you'll um, and we'll get into what is included in that sketch. And you need to lay that down first, and then we'll be able to analyze it, do an analysis on it using the SWOT method: and strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now, hopefully, most of you have looked at the video. Um, I think it was an Australian gentleman that was, uh, I, think, I thought he did a good job on uh, depicting the strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities in the video. So if you haven't had a chance to look at that um, a YouTube video, please take a look at that um, as well. Within the site analysis, um, there's all kinds of issues that we need to uh, address, which is you know, regulatory, uh, zoning codes, the topography we have to look at, soil conditions we'll be getting into. Um, as part of an analysis, uh, exist, existing plants we need to, um, plants and trees we need to record on our sketch what's there, uh, what's existing, including the house. Any features there, um, we need to put um, estimated dimensions on there and distances, um, and be able to get a general idea how big, how far. Um, and then as we're thinking through this. Um, we have to kind of reverse engineering it. We're thinking at, okay, how will this site impact my design? Instead of saying we're just slapping a design on there, we have to look at the impacts and some of the impacts we talked about yesterday. So again, first step is, is know what's on your site, the topography, the drainage, soil conditions. Um, you don't have to dig down too far to find out what your soil conditions are. Um, you know, it just, uh, uh, one shovel full will tell you what you have, and I'm going to guess that most of you, unless you live in a really good area that's been cultivated or used for agriculture, or um, a lot of times like um, donkey pens or sheep pens, um, where the animals mainly stay. Um, even even some of the grazing fields will have better soil because of the years of, of manure and and straw and stuff that's been put down on there. Um, in a couple of days, we'll be talking about a thing called composting, and that's 
uh, nature's way of decomposing um, and making a soil very rich. Um, and I'll say this again probably later on. There's, there's. I used to say that there was, uh, um, you know, no new dirt. Uh, we, we have what we have. Um, whether we transport it, whether it gets blown off, this is what we have. But you can create uh, new soil, new dirt, and that's through composting, which um, we'll talk about later. I, I'm really involved in composting in, in our yard. All right. So we also have to uh, put it. Um, Think about the exposure of the site, uh, the orientation of the house, uh, where the trees are, sun, wind that comes across, uh, the hardscape that we talked about, the walkways, the concrete. What kind of traffic flow? Uh, do we not have a sidewalk or a pathway that people just cut across the lawn continuously? And now we have this rutted area like I have on the side of the house. I have nice grass. Um, but right in the middle where our gate lines up at the side, I have this, uh, it's not down to dirt, but it's pretty well mashed down St. Augustine grass. Um, that's because we constantly walk that path um, because that, that side of the house is on a slight slope and that's, where we walk that path is in line with the gate and it's a little more flat there. So we have to take all these things into consideration. As we start sketching this out, we start doing a, a reconnaissance, basically. Now, this sketch here obviously shows the front and backyard, and we're just concentrating on the front yard um, of whatever project you're working on. Here they have some numbers, and of course, that with those numbers, um, they will have, and I can't use a pointer on this, so I don't know if you can see my cursor or not. Wait a minute. Just found one. Uh, <laughs> laser pen. Let's see how that works. All right, so here they have numbers. I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, on a new toy. And somebody just commented in the box, but I can't see the box. So um, if uh, James, one of, uh, one of the Jameses, you guys have mics, I know, can you just say yes or no if you can see the uh, thing? We can just see you. You can just see me? Yeah. You can't see the PowerPoint? No. Oh, oh, you guys, you're killing me. All right. I don't know what the heck happened here. I'm just like having a good old time over here. All right. Let me get out of this. Go all the way back to the beginning. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Can't see anything. Oh, great. All right. Well, now at least I can see. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just having a great old time finding all these new tools over here. Um, let me, do it. Let me do it this way. All right. Can you see my wonderful PowerPoints now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, all right. You're my, all right. Happy hour. All right. Great. All right. Going back to slide number one. Uh, I don't believe it. All right, slide analysis. I'm going to make this quick as you heard the verbal, the, the audio on it. And I will, of course, this is recorded. So I got to power through this because there'll be some slides to get through. All right, uh, so site analysis. Again, we have to do an analysis of every site. Um, the site is, all right, put it this way. Um, the, the site analysis will gather information, as I said previous, will analyze what we have and conditions and things like that. That's required. We have to do that to be able to be to develop a better plan for landscaping and for usage as well. So we're going to use a sketch. The first thing you do is, is you're going to sketch uh, the project that you're working on. This is, again, for the front yard. You're going to sketch, uh, sketch it out. You'll locate all the existingness there. And the second thing we'll do after we get that sketch down is we actually will start forming a site analysis, including the strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities, and threats. Make sure you look at the video on SWAT. That will help you quite a bit. Within all of this, we have uh, some other things that we have to consider, such as zoning, the topography, actually how the land lays, um, existing trees, um, how would the uh, site be impacted that I talked about. 
All right, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to sketch the site, which includes these items here. I already mentioned these. This um, is posted, and I will make sure the most recent, I did some adjustments here for this class because of the screen, the uh, slides weren't showing up right. So I'll um, repost this, but here's all the things, some of the things to consider, including the concrete walkway traffic flows I left off on, I think. Um, what, is it, what is the yard going to be used for, or how is that front yard going to be used? Uh, we have some houses in our development that uh, people hang out out front. They have the smokers and the barbecues on the driveway. Kids are playing probably from two or three houses down all on one lot, playing out front. Um, they have, you know, maybe uh, some kind of toys on the weekends out there, um, or is it exclusively just for some nice landscaping? Um, are there animals that uh, might affect uh, the landscape? So all these things, the usage has to be taken into consideration. This is where I kind of found my new toy, and I can't find it here. All right, hopefully you can see my cursor. So on this particular sketch here, um, they've numbered this. Of course, you can do that um, instead of calling it out um, as well. You can have a legend or you can have the numbers here. Um, okay, thanks, James. Um, you can have the numbers referring to, to a, um, a legend or you can just have notation like they have it here. Uh, of course, you want to call out the sidewalk, the concrete, all the hardscape and the softscape, and you want to have estimated sizes on everything. You want to have estimated distances. Um, if you create a baseline, uh, you can use the house for your baseline. Um, you can say the edge of the driveway is over by you know, two feet, and it's uh, 24 or 17 feet wide. Um, then you have a walkway that's so many feet out from the house and so many feet wide. Um, and James Meek says, in my father's drawings, they have included landscaping. It's had, had a legend, so it was numbered. Yeah, so if you do, do use the legend, yes, it will be numbered. Thanks, James, for that, uh, pointing that out. So yeah, you'll have a legend of some kind um, um, or just do direct call-outs. Now, the reason they go to legends a lot and just the numbers, because sometimes it gets so cluttered in there with, with different information that they have. So. We have to kind of determine how much information is in there. And again, this sketch, guys, don't worry um, that, you know, that you change format when you go from the sketch to CAD. I'm not going to do a comparison on it. You know, the only thing I'll look at is the house and the correct location and uh, is the um, driveway and the sidewalk um, either in the correct location or was it called to be removed and realigned in some way. So. Uh, those kinds of things are possible, but I'm not going to hold you to your sketch, to your final drawing on this um, as far as the, the details. So you can change this up as, as it evolves, and that's what planning is all about. All right, so a site analysis is a primary, for a definition of this, is a primary phase of architecture and urban design process. So this whole thing of site analysis is a, a formal process that an architect or an ar a landscape architectural office will go through. Now, they use SWAT for other things. They, they use it for in business. Uh, we used it for a, a project that was trying to get a um, community uh, college community garden going. And we were having meetings and using SWAT um, to analyze the site that we were going to propose this garden to be on. Um, we use SWAT in, in business when you're analyzing purchasing a business or starting a business. So SWAT isn't just uh, for landscape architecture or for architecture. Um, it's used in a lot of different areas. But it's a process dedicated to the study of the climate, geological, geographical, excuse me, historical, legal, and infrastructure context of the specific site. So a site analysis includes a footprint, um, start with your basic dimensions and the shape of your property, existing features that we talked about, and the topography. Site analysis is a hydro zone, and that looks like that is misspelled. Uh, I guess not. Hydro zones. Um, this was actually cited out of out of here. So 
Um, that's the way they're spelling it. So hydro zones, um, and everybody knows that hydro is water. Um, so how does water behave on the site? I mean, what kind of drainage? Like we have a drainage problem that, um, that is um, not good when it, uh, when it rains a lot, but you know, when it's dry, it's no problem. But we have right in the middle of the yard, we have the backyard, our neighbor behind us, their water drains into our yard. Diagonal to the, uh, that would be to the southeast, their water drains. Um, uh, Iman says hydro zones. So maybe there needs to be a hyphen in there. I didn't see that as one of the options. I, did, I hate to change somebody else's, uh, oh, there is, there is an option. This is somebody else's sighting, so I didn't hate to change that. I just, just noticed that. So. Iman, thank you for that. Yeah, it probably should be hyphenated. Um, so, and then we have to the south, south uh, east, we have a diagonal lot draining into our, our yard. And when the, to the, uh, directly to the east, we have another yard uh, that's draining uh, into our yard. When it rains a lot, we're getting all this water. Well, we have some area drains that were installed prior to us moving here that are not uh, exactly they're helping the area that they're in, but they need to be extended into this other uh, problem area. So drainage is a huge issue because a plant that has too much water can die almost as quickly as, as a plant that does not have water. The same goes with ground cover. Uh, the only thing you would not worry about is gravel, right? If you had a gravel area uh, that you're having these problems. But you still have to be aware um, of the drainage uh, for these, um, the drainage for each one of these uh, sites. So it's sun exposure, that's a whole nother thing that we have to take in consideration because there again, you're going to be dealing with plants, some like uh, partial shade, some like direct sun, some like all shade, some like to be watered more heavily or be in moist soil, some like to be in, in primarily dry soil. So the wind is going to be a factor, the sun's going to be a factor on this. Uh, we have some hanging plants out there. Uh, even in the mildest, um, the mild weather that we're going through right now, if we have winds, those those hanging pots are going to dry out. Uh, so there's a lot of factors um, that have to do with the wind and uh, sun, the orientation of the lot. Um, concrete walkways, you know, are they draining properly? Something that was put in, uh, maybe they're they were draining them properly at one time, um, but because of wear and tear and cracking, maybe they're not doing so well now. So maybe they have to be replaced. So, uh, that's all part of looking at the site analysis. And here is just a depiction on how they're showing uh, the sun path and how it will affect, um, affect the plants on that. Are they showing a, a wind direction coming in? So if we look at site analysis, we need to first define site. That's the first word in there. So site uh, being a noun is an area of ground in which a town, building, or a monument is constructed. So um, I think everybody is pretty much on tune of what a site is. Um, and we'll move into define an analysis and detailed examination of the elements or structure of something. Um, so it doesn't have to be a uh, if you're doing an analysis, again, it doesn't have to be of a site. It can be an analysis of, uh, uh, you know, eating habits or sleeping habits. It can be a whole, it can be analysis of anything. But we're, we're going to deal with looking at the land, looking at the environment around, looking how things are affecting that site, and that's going to be all part of the site analysis uh, getting into. We have to look at the site as a whole. Again, you, for this project, we're introducing these terms. We're introducing uh, this process. And I just went blank again. I don't know if you guys' screen goes blank or not, but I just totally went blank. Okay, now I'm back. Um, <laughs> yours is fine. <laughs> Thanks, James. <laughs> James uh, make it, says his is, or your guys' is fine. Uh, it kind of scares me. I, I, my computer started doing something similar to this uh, before the old one crashed. I talked to the guy who built this one, and he said, no, it, it's something with the software um, being Blackboard uh, Collaborate that's causing it. 
What was weird about this last one, only one screen went blank, not both of them. So, I hope I fall off the face of the earth and I can't get a hold of you. Um, don't worry, I'll be back someday. <laughs> All right, uh, so um, taking a look at everything. So, on here we have some. Uh, uh, indications of slope, um, how how this uh, water will slope away um, in this lawn area. You can see we have uh, some additional sloping, so we may have some water problems down here as well. Um, uh, Iman says, do we have to draw uh, all the analysis in one sheet? Well, that's a great question. Um, with a, I'm going to call a fairly simple front yard, unless you have acreage for a front yard, then think about that one. Um, you you typically do include everything on the analysis on one sheet, but if it comes too complex, uh, you may have to break it into two sheets in the CAD portion. In the sketching portion, you should be able to get everything, general notes and everything on one sheet. Um, Iman, let me know if you have a situation that um, is maybe a large area or maybe it's a really small area that you have a lot of information in and then we can um, deal with each one of those separately. Um, but as far as the assignment right now, we'll try to get everything on one sheet. As we move in towards the final project, something like this will take a couple sheets at least. So, um, all right, Amon says okay. So we can talk about that and we can have general discussion, um, open discussion as we get more into this um, at the beginning of class because these open discussions are very good. Uh, in helping, uh, very beneficial in helping all of us, uh, not only me as an instructor, and what I'm not communicating clearly or posting clearly, but uh, for other students that may not quite understand a concept or question. So uh, believe me, uh, it's not a waste of time to have these. You know, yesterday I, we had over a 30 minute open discussion, and now we uh, are at, um, we have about 30 minutes this morning. So um, great. Comments and discussions are welcome. They don't have to be great. Any discussions or comments are welcome. All right. So what are we looking at here? 34. So okay, we'll go a couple more and we'll take a break. So site analysis. Here's a typically some information that might be put on there, calling out the uh, patio area, for example, the flower bed. Um, notice here on the patio, they're saying what time of day it's going to be shaded. Um, they don't have, oh yeah, they do, right up here, a north arrow. So um, different indications, uh, you know, this would be down to the south the south here, and then over here would be the east, and we know the, um, the sun's going to set on the west. So uh, setting from this direction, this is a, in the afternoon, we're going to get a lot of shade over there. Um, we have a, uh, we take this house layout, let's just use it for example, we have a, I'm trying to think the orientation on it. But anyway, right at the corner of the house, let's just say it's right in here, we have a hydrangea. Um, I, my wife loves them and I think they're beautiful flowers, but there are some complications with it. It's not doing well. It's about two feet tall. It has a couple of blooms per year, um, as opposed to um, my sister in law, um, who has a very nice house. Uh, she was married to a, a millionaire. Anyway, she has gardeners and stuff. They have hydrangeas that are like you know, three, four feet tall, blooming these huge blooms all year round. And the difference is sun exposure and soil and watering. I water the heck out of this plant on the corner, even when it doesn't need it. So is it getting too much water? Not by the soil samples that I take. What happens is it's getting morning, um, morning, some morning sun, but a lot of shade in the morning, which it probably likes. But then in the evening when it's setting, the sun goes down and it's just catching that thing. So in the summertime, it just beats on that poor hydrangea, which does not like a lot of sun and a lot of heat. So it's getting like part of it's okay, and then it's just getting nailed in the afternoon with too much sun. So it's in the wrong place. The second thing is uh, my sister-in-law has a gardener, and so they know what, number one, what to feed a hydrangea, and number two, what type of soil it has to go in. Right there, I just on one plant alone, I've identified some problems, and that's why plant placement, the plants themselves, the placement, the soil, the exposure, there is a lot to uh, being a landscape designer or a landscape architect. 
not just, oh, we got some pretty flowers, let's put them in the ground and get some water to them and we're good to go. Uh, there's a lot more to it. And hopefully I'll be able to take you through some of that uh, through this course. All right. So here is a more developed um, site analysis, uh, getting into it and kind of back to Iman, what she was saying, do we have to put everything on one, um, one sheet? Well, again, depending on how much information uh, out of the start for the front, you can see this encompasses the front and back and side yards. So for a front yard, um, you should be able to get everything on one sheet that we're going to be talking about. So what is, it, what is the result of the site analysis? It's usually a graphical sketch which sets a relationship with relevant environmental information. So that is one of the biggest things is considering the environmental information. James Meek, um, thought of the amount of time to put into our, our arboretums. Yes, and then and zoos makes me cringe now. Yeah, um, and. Arboretums are enough. But zoos, I mean, you're dealing with open areas, and then they try to create uh, within the zoos uh, the environment for these specific animals. So I'm sure they group them in a logical sense as far as environmental. Um, and James, I didn't even think, oh man, that just blows my mind too. Uh, we start thinking about that. So um, that's a huge task. But a, a great landscape architect or designer uh, would be very beneficial in something like that. And something like that would be very specific. That's something you would really have to be mentored in for many years. Even if you're a landscape, as you're working through your landscape license, that if you pick a field and you get mentored in that field, by the time you get your landscape architect license, uh, you'll be well versed in how to create these different environmental. Uh, zones and stuff um, and become a specialist. So you can see within landscape architecture, and James, thanks for pointing that out, um, there are specific areas that you can work in. Um, my brother, the landscape architect, he uh, started off with parks uh, many year, years ago. He was specifically worked on working with cities on designing parks. Um, that was his expertise. Um, now he's into uh, more of commercial buildings and the zero scape. Um, that you may have heard about what uh, drought tolerance, of course, in California, it's a huge concern. Um, and the planting and the irrigation, um, that whole, when we get into the drip system and, and the irrigation layout, that's a whole other thing. So you can really specialize in areas um, and be and contribute to um, different, um, different fields very easily. So great point, James. All right, so uh, let me just finish through this. Uh, the site terms of a parcel of topography built um, environment. So we have to look at them individually, considering the environment around. So the parcel, the topography on it. And one of the other things, let me just back up real quick and see. Not showing on that one. Okay, on this slide here, if you take a look, um, here's their, their board fence that they're calling out on this. That typically is going to be your, your PL, your property line. Look here, they're actually calling out some trees that are probably on the neighbor's property. They're calling out something. They, uh, oh, right here. Good thing it wasn't a snake. Uh, neighbor's birch trees. They don't give a diameter, uh, which they, they probably should, or estimated diameter, and they should do that on all these trees. Um, <laughs> yeah, James laughing at me about the snake, I think. Um, but I want you to look how they're taking consideration the neighbors. When we were doing land surveying, um, and we would topo or uh, do a reconnaissance, and basically a topo was doing a, an analogy of, of the, the flow and what was there, such as trees and concrete work um, of a site, um, we would have, we were required to go to 10, 15, uh, 10 to 15, maybe even 20 feet into the uh, adjoining parcels. And that included going out into the street, um, any uh, property behind or north, 
north or south of this property, we have to go 10 to 15, maybe even 20 feet. We would take that information back in because that information would be in the calculations of drainage. You know, was was the uh, water draining away or to the fence line? Um, is there a problem with uh, draining onto another piece of property, which in California they uh, they don't allow? Uh, you, you have to drain off your property, your own property. Uh, that's why I was surprised when we bought our first house here in Texas. We had uh, the right neighbor was draining into our yard, and our neighbor was our, our yard was draining into our other neighbor's yard. It was just going downhill. It had some drainage that carried out the front, but the majority of it was going um, from yard to yard. So um, all that's taken into consideration uh, within the planning um, of the site analysis. All right, I'm going to pause here for a break. Uh, 133, come back at one. Let's make it 145, and we'll take a break here, and then we'll get up about another 50. Uh, yeah, about another 15 um, slides to go through, and then we'll uh, just take a quick look at the lessons, let you go into lab time from there. So um, back at one five. In a few. Oh, uh, before I let you go, um, make sure that you post any questions or write down any questions that you have and prepare them uh, when we come back to as well. 